Alright guys, so in this video we're going to go ahead and create the navigation bar. Now in the previous video as you saw that we created grids, what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and select all these elements and I'm come here to the website and I'm just going to go ahead and paste it over here. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and call this page settings, right? So now we have kind of like a basic structure. I'm going to go ahead and just delete all this because we do not need any of that and I will turn off the grid as well. Now the first thing we want to do is obviously we have the logo. So let's go ahead and bring in the logo. Now what you want to do is you want to define the height and the width of the logo. In this case I've defined the height to be 24 and the width automatically takes up because it has to maintain the ratio. Okay, so obviously we want this to be on the left side of the screen. So we want it to be 72 pixels away from the left side. So you can hold down shift and use the arrow keys to move around and this is going to be 72, right? Perfect. The next thing that you want to do is you just don't want to place it over here. The next thing you want to do is we want to add some bottom and top spacing, right? Because when we design our navigation bar, because if you look over here in our reference, all right, I'm going to go ahead and just hide this in our reference. You can see that we have this, you know, this whole nav bar and the image is 32 pixels has spacing at 32 pixels on the top and 32 pixels on the bottom. So you want to create this sort of a container or this bounding box and then put the elements inside that. Okay, so we're going to do that. So let's go to the website and I'm going to move this by 32 pixels. Okay, and let's go ahead and start adding properties, right? This is what you want to do. So I'm going to go ahead and start off by saying navigation or just say nav bar. All right, I'm going to call this also nav bar. Okay, and uh, the first one is going to be um, Top padding is 32 pixels, right? This is the property that we have sort of defined. Okay, so move this over here. Great. So now this is done. Um, we're going to create the bottom padding as well. But for now, let's go and create the other sections over here where we've got experience, work, photography, and contact, right? So the first thing we do is I'm actually going to make sure that I copy the same value. So we've got 16 pixels and 150 pixel line height and uh, the color is at 70%. That's cool. Okay. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to press T on my keyboard. Let's move over here. Okay. And I'm going to type in experience. Okay. Now, first of all, we want to set the color to white. Now, every time you set a color, make sure that you are picking it from the color palette. All right. Because you don't want any colors that, you know, um, do not, are not a part of the color palette. You always want to make sure that this is it. Okay. And now we are going to go ahead and add some settings. So the font I'm using is called Send. It's a free Google font. And I think it's a really beautiful looking font. So you can use this for your mobile apps or you could use it for websites as well. But for the purpose of this entire course, I'm going to be using Send. Now Send only has three, which is three weights, which is regular, bold, and extra bold. We'll be using only uh, regular and bold for this. So it should be fine. Great. Now the font size is 16 and this is a base font size. When you are create, starting off with a website, you start off, you always want to start off with a base size. And most of the times it's 16 or 17 or 18. Um, depending on your personal preference, I tend to keep it at 16. Now the line height is 150%. Now line height is the distance between li line number one and line number two. So for example, if I go ahead and say, I press enter and I type in experience and say experience again, Okay, and obviously I want to change the alignment to be left so we can see it. You can see that as I increase the line height, you can see that the distance between the elements, they change. All right, so a good ideal value is to set it from 120% to 150%. And this is, and this percentage is on the percentage of the font size, right? So 130% of 16. So we're going to go ahead and set this to 150% because that's what we're going to be using. Now we have three different properties over here, which is align top align middle and align bottom. And what we want to do is you always want to choose align middle because in code, the code automatically puts the text to be align middle. So you always want to make sure that any text that you are designing for mobile apps or for websites, try to make sure that the alignment is set to middle. Okay, great. Now the next thing is uh, let's go ahead and just delete this because we don't want it. Okay. And we're going to go ahead and add this to our design system. So I'm going to go ahead and choose create style and I'm going to call this paragraph underscore 16 pixels because there are going to be th multiple types of text. One is going to be heading, one is going to be paragraph, one is going to be overline, maybe label, anything else. Whatever text size we have, they kind of fall into a particular category. Now this is a paragraph because it's going to be a paragraph text, right? So we're going to go ahead and choose create style. Okay. So now we have this paragraph 16 text as over here. Great. 
Now, the next thing is to go ahead and we want to make multiples of these, right? We want multiples, but we want to make sure that the spacing and the sizing and the puff and everything else is perfect. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to press Shift A, all right, or Auto Layout, okay? And that creates this sort of a bounding box. Now, before we saw that we, we had a, a value of 32 pixel top padding, or actually it's not just top, it's top and bottom padding of 32 pixels. We want the same thing over here. So we're going to go select this auto layout and here on the top, we're going to say 32. Okay. So now you can see that we have this 32 and I'm going to move this along to the top. So it touches and next I'm going to set the left and right to be 24. Now these are values that I am defining. Now you can set this to 16 or 20 or whatever you want, but I'm going to be setting it to 24. Great. So this looks perfectly done. Now all we have to do is go ahead and duplicate this. All right, so everything has to be in the sort of a container, right? Everything has to be inside a box. That's how code is built. Okay, so the other ones is work, photography, and contacts. I'm just gonna go ahead and call this work. Okay, and as you can see, it kind of changes over here, right? This, the, you know, the it maintains that ratio of 24 pixels padding on both the sides. Okay, work, experience work, and then this is going to be photography. Right. And I'm going to go ahead and duplicate this. And this is going to be contact, right? Perfect. Now for contact, we actually have a background color. So I'm going to go select this, this frame and I'm going to come here to the fill and I'm going to choose this purple one that we created, right? This is what we want. Okay. The other thing I'm going to do is this paragraph. I want it to be bold, only this one. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to kind of unlink this by clicking on this button. And I'm going to change it to bold. Okay. And now this is a different font style, right? So we have to create another new font style. So I'm going to go ahead and click on the plus click on create. Now this we're going to be, we're going to say heading, even though this is not really heading the style, the, the way I'm going to go about it is anything that's a regular font weight is going to be paragraph and anything that is bold is going to be a heading. So I'm going to go ahead and just call this heading and say 16 pixels, right? Great. So we've got paragraph and we've got heading. Now you always want to order this in a particular way. So you want headings to be on the top and you want paragraphs to be on the bottom. As we go ahead and create more, we'll kind of go and define it, right? Perfect. So now what we did was, as you can see that we have these four boxes, which are kind of touching each other. Now there's something else that we can do, which is really cool. So let me actually duplicate this to kind of give an example. Let's go ahead. And for these three, I'm going to go ahead and um, give this a background color of black, just so that we can see what's happening. And I'm going to select all these four. Okay. And now I'm going to put these into an auto layout. So I'm going to press shift a, and now this becomes an auto layout. So what's basically going to happen is let's say I do not want this work, right? Let's say I want only three tabs. If I delete it, you can see that auto layout makes sure that everything is kind of stuck together and it feels really responsive, right? It looks pretty cool. Now let's take another situation where let's say that we want another tab, right? So rather than spending time creating another one and, you know, moving it and making sure that everything is perfect, you can just say control C control V and that kind of puts that into this frame, into this auto layout frame, right? And it kind of moves things accordingly. And this reduces a lot of time and a lot of clicks, right? It's going to be pretty awesome. So I'm going to go ahead and actually delete this and we're going to select these three and press shift A these four and press shift a and that puts them into an auto layout and over here i'm going to move this over to the right side until i get 72 pixel spacing right fantastic so now our nav bar is almost done the only thing left we have to do is we're going to go ahead and select these two okay and now we're going to put this into a frame right because we want every section to have a distinguishable box or a container so what i'm going to do is i'm going to right click and i'm going to say frame selection. Now the shortcut is control alt G on windows and control option G on Mac. So you're going to choose this. And now as you can see, it creates a new frame and we can go ahead and call this frame. If you want, we can call this nav bar. Okay. But this frame, we kind of wanted to touch the edges of the screen. So I'm going to press alt or option, right? And I'm going to drag. Now when I drag, you can see that it moves only one side. So I'm going to hold down control or command. When I do that, you can see that I can freely move it on the left and right side. And I can go ahead and make sure that it is touching the edges. So, right. So this, what we have is technically our nav bar. And I'm going to go ahead and add a background color to this, set this to be black so we can see it, right? So this is our nav bar. This is how you need to build components. And this is how you need to structure items on your website, right? So this is pretty much it. Now, one last thing before I wrap up is that you can see that even though we created the grid, 
these items are technically not following the grid, right? They are just placed, but but the thing to note is that not all elements and structures and sections on your website have to follow the grid. Some of them do not have to follow the grid and some of them do have to do it. And how do you know which one? That depends upon your layout, your content and what type of design style you're trying to achieve. So in this case, we've just gone ahead and made sure that everything is in the center and we are not following grid. And that is completely okay. When we create the hero section, we're gonna go ahead and follow the grid. So I'll see you guys in the next video.